Hello, everyone. This is Selena Belial, and I am the founder and one of the instructors here at CE Institute, where we teach chair massage CE classes, primarily for massage therapists and body workers. But if you have a different service that you want to alter, alternate instead of providing chair massage, today we're going to teach you about setting up and hopefully even selling on-site corporate events for service. I'm recording this in COVID at the beginning of 2022 during the pandemic here. And I just heard on the news how employers with the employee shortages are offering things like Botox at the office to get pe their workers to show up and incentivize them to remain employed because look, we're gonna give you these fabulous benefits. Well, I think chair massage is a much better benefit <laughs> than uh, Botox at the office. So let's get started and I'll show show you a, a checklist of maybe things that you want to set up and, and consider to provide this on-site event and some tips on how to sell yourself as well. First of all, I want to let you know, um, my first massage establishment practice, we were featured on the cover of the Boston Business Journal for our on-site corporate chair massage at an accounting firm. This accounting firm was, they were pretty clever <laughs> and they knew that if they showed the Boston market that they had massage at the office, they might be able to um, uh, reach out and gain interest in the highest skilled uh, employment uh, or employees in that market. Oh, look, that, that office, office chair massage. So, you know, using chair massage to garner publicity, free publicity, you can't even buy an advertisement um, they usually don't advertise on the front page of newspapers, right? Not that we're still using newspapers these days, but to get that free publicity, no matter whether it's online or in a newspaper or whatever, um, that's for your business. It's almost like you're getting paid to advertise yourself. And we've been in the news several times with my past establishments for our on-site services. So how do I charge for them? I usually charge the same rate that I charge charge if you're coming to the office with a minimum of two hours as long as the client is within like a 30 minute travel radius and one of the reasons I charge the same rate as appointments in the office is again it's almost like paid publicity for your practice if I go to a corporate employer and I see I do 10 minute appointments so I'm seeing six people an hour and getting my hands on them and getting paid for it. That's that's six people that might be likely to come to my office and have regular full body treatments and so forth, one hour sessions. So it, again, it's like paid advertising. And so corporate on-site chair massage, we love these accounts. We love this work because not only are you getting paid for it, but it's usually a tool that can expand your business visibility and um, grow your clients base whether it's only at the corporation and we found that sometimes up to 10% of the people we worked on at corporations came to our establishment afterwards um, keep in mind you might think 10% is really low but what is the cost of acquiring a new client anyways if you're doing advertising or pay-per-clicks or social media um, uh, visibility posts and stuff like that. If you have to pay for those, <laughs> now you're in the negative versus getting paid to go to an office and hopefully garner new clients. So I want to talk about payment for a moment. Before I ever go to an on-site event, which I have to mark time out of my calendar, uh, I'm not able to see regular appointments when I do this, I'm going to have to travel, I always get prepaid with a new client first. Unless you know them, trust them, it, it's up to you to determine your business operations. But I'll tell you with us, we never walked out the door for a new client unless we were prepaid in advance. And when the corporation is setting up this event, it doesn't matter if only two people signed up for chair massage. I might go a little bit longer on those two people. Um, if there were supposed to be eight appointments for every hour, 15 minute sessions for two hour minimum. 
Um, I, anybody who would, if the, the time slots are filled, I, I would offer them, hey, do you want to do a 30 minute or 25 minute and give them longer so that the employer doesn't feel like they're cheated. They paid for time that was not received um, because I'm going to get paid whether they have their time slots filled or not. I also include parking in my charges. We, we, uh, my first business was in Qu Quincy and Braintree, Massachusetts. It was a suburb of Boston and a lot of our corporate on-site chair massage accounts were in Boston. We had to pay for parking. So I always arranged parking ahead of time because parking in, an, in a city, in a metropolitan city, could be $25, $30 or more. And let's say you're charging $100 an hour for your service and you're only getting 200 bucks. You don't want to take that 200 bucks and then deduct $25 for parking, plus maybe driving in rush hour or something like that, which is extra time. So this needs to be financially successful for you. Ask them about parking options before you arrive. They might have a free parking lot. They might have corporate rates available um, at a specific garage or lot. This should be arranged prior to going to the event. I always uh, provide a sign-up sheet in advance. And I usually email this to the client once I receive their payment. And on the sign-up sheet, that's one of the ways to procure payment is, is I can't send you the sign-up sheet until you pay. <laughs> um, and I would have a little contract about what would be provided for service. And, and this is something that you can write up usually on your own. We never used an attorney for it. I, I'm going to provide eight 15-minute appointments. You need to provide at least 24, 48 hours notice to cancel for refund or, or, or those types of details. And that little, I used to have a one-sided, one-page contract for that. Write whatever details you feel is appropriate for your business. And once they sign the contract, they paid. We usually took credit cards over the phone. They could mail us a check too. Of course, that's going to be slower. Um, once it was paid, I would send the sign-up sheet. And the sign-up sheet would simply be the time. So let's say they started their on-site event at 10 a.m. So And we're doing 15-minute appointments. So it would be 10, 10, 15, 10, 30, 11. 11, 11, 15, 11, 30, 12. And then I always made sure that our therapist had at least 30 minute meal breaks if they were doing like a, a midday on-site service or if they were doing maybe three or four hours or longer, they always got meal breaks. Um, it's important. It's hard to do four hours of chair massage nonstop. If, if you're a massage warrior and you can do it, go right ahead. But I think the quality of your service, hands-on service, will be better when you're rested. And hand massage is, I'm sorry, Chair massage can be a lot of work on the hands. Um, of course, you should be using your elbows and forearms as well, but try and get some breaks in there. Now, when I arrive at the office, I will make sure that all of the appointment slots are filled. If they're not, I'm going to notify the organizer, hey, we have a 11 o'clock chair massage still available. Sometimes they can do paging over an intercom in a corporate environment. Hey, we have an 11 o'clock uh, slot open with a massage therapist today for chair massage if anybody wants one. Um, and sometimes they'll do an email or a message that pops up on their desktops and so forth. Hey, open appointment to try and get you full. The idea really is to fill every slot while you're there. So the employer feels value and you'll be able to expose yourself to as many people as possible. You could also accept gratuities. Usually with our corporate accounts, we didn't um, uh, elicit gratuities. In, in high volume areas where we were doing chair massage for individual payment, where it wasn't pre-scheduled or prepaid, we would put like a fishbowl out that said, you know, gratuities appreciated and, and funny little sayings and stuff like that. But with a corporate event, usually it, we would want to include the gratuity and the price. So you could say, okay, it's $100 an hour, plus we're going to charge you a 20% service charge, and then we'll discourage tipping from your staff so everything's taken care of. Those are business decisions that you need to make on your own when you're uh, deciding your contract price and writing your contract, okay? Just a couple things to, to think about. So your sign-up sheet, I always get to the office early, and make sure your sign-up sheet, you have the the um, of course, the date, the times of the service, and the individual's name, and make sure you get their phone number next to it. The name isn't good enough, um, because what happens in a corporate environment is people forget the time. Uh, 
okay? And they run behind a lot. And if they only have a 10 minute appointment, but they're 15 minutes late, they've lost their appointment, which is, we don't want employees to be upset over this employment benefit because they missed out. So when I get to the office early, I always call everyone. Usually it was phone extension. So I would ask my organizer how to use their business phone. And then I would call the extensions individually and say, hey, this is their, your massage therapist. We have you at, you know, three o'clock this afternoon, and I'm in conference room B on the second floor. Uh, make sure they know where your location was and um, during your onsite event. And what I usually do is I ask for a printed copy at the office of the sign up, and I will tape this on the outside of the office door where I'm providing that corporate chair massage. I always try and get into a private office so people are glaring or gawking at the massage service. Nobody feels uncomfortable in the chair. Some people are a little bit private about that. Also, when the individual gets into the chair, if you notice this individual here on this picture, you'll see that they're wearing a business shirt. They might've had a blazer on top of this. If you have uh, people coming in with suits and ties, you might want to have them loosen up their tie, maybe unbutton the, some of the top buttons, and definitely take off the blazer. Um, if people are wearing sweaters, what have you, layers of clothing, it's really important for your own hands' sake, your elbows, your forearms, that you know you don't have to apply a million pounds of pressure because they cannot feel it through all that layer of clothing. They're going to receive better service, and your work is going to be easier when you have the client undressed to their last layer of clothing in the massage chair. I don't recommend that people become fully undressed, men bare-chested or women in bras. I have seen corporate events where they do this, but that increases the amount of sanitation and privacy required in a corporate environment. And when you're only doing 10 or 15 minute appointments, they're not very long. You don't want to spend time dressing and undressing. You want to spend time with your hands on the client. So just down to their last layer of clothing, usually their shirt, not an undergarment. Um, it should be quickly removable and uh, be able to put it back on for the chair massage service. You, once you get to the office, again, you call everyone prior to their service. And I'll do this when I arrive. Hey, you know, the appointment time and you're going on. Now, depending on where you are in geographical location. If you can get your chair to the office space pretty easily, great in these supplies. I like using a wagon and I would put a massage chair in my wagon. I would also bring a folding chair because if you're, especially if you're not during COVID, what I would normally do is I would sit a, sit a chair in front of the client, especially with 15, 20, 30 minute chair massage appointments. And I might do a hand massage with massage cream or gel. That's usually nice. People love their hands being worked on um, and it feels great. Usually my chair massage, my corporate on-site services are dry through the clothing or direct contact on the skin or scalp uh, massage. But if I, I do a hand massage, then I'll use cream or gel on the hands. And instead of being on my knees or lunging to massage the hands, I'll bring a folding chair and sit in front of them and do their hands that way. During COVID, I would stress to have a second face cushion during your chair massage service. And that's because of dwell time. If you don't know what dwell time is during sanitation or disinfection, we do have free training about that um, in the same place that you probably found this video. Please look up how much contact time or dwell time you need for your disinfectants. When you are providing corporate chair massage, of course you have to disinfect your chair in between each client. And to effectively do so, that disinfectant needs to remain wet on the surface of things like your face cushion for a certain period of time. Most disinfectants work between maybe four and 10 minutes. So obviously you can't wait between four and 10 minutes when you're booked six people in an hour for 10 minute massages. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your face cradle, you're gonna disinfect it, you're gonna set it aside. You're gonna take a new face cradle cushion that has been previously disinfected and put it on your chair. And then you're also going to put face cradle cushion covers over that cushion. You'll do your next massage. Um, you're going to take your face cushion off. You disinfect the cushion and the whole chair, the chest pad, the arm pads, the knee pads. But because the face cushion is next to the airway and 
uh, COVID-19 is a respiratory disease. And of course, during cold and flu season, that's a, a huge area. That's where your mucous membranes, a lot of them are. Huge area for virus and bacterial transmission. We want to make sure that that face cushion is properly disinfected in between clients. Sometimes the employers will ask you about this prior to arriving to the establishment. You want to have a sanitation plan in place that you can whiz off um, with any question and explain to them that your sanitation efforts are second to none. Um, so another thing that I like bringing to a massage uh, corporate event is a prenatal or large breast cushion. Um, and let me, I'm gonna try and Google this to, for you guys. Um, chair massage, uh, breast or prenatal cushion. Um, these are these triangular cushions. Let me type in here, triangle and see if I can get one up here for you. There we go. So these triangular wedges, you would put this right against the chest pad. And if the individual is pregnant or maybe they're large breasted, the this angle, and let me get a little highlighter here for you, this angle right here, the flat end, would go up against the chest pad. There's gonna be Velcro there and hopefully on the chest area of your chair, there will be matching Velcro that you can match up. Of course, if you get a chair and the triangular pad from the same manufacturer, they will match up for you. Um, but that um, uh, the tip of the triangle there is gonna go in between the breast and the belly. And this helps create space for your pregnant clients. You wouldn't want to do a chair massage at a corporate event and say, oh, it's not for pregnant people. <laughs> you know, make sure that you do have proper prenatal training so you know what eclampsia is and, and um, PIH and so forth. Um, but you, um, as long as you're trained in prenatal services, this little cushion is what, 50 bucks? Um, you know, it's worth carrying that around. Most people are not gonna tell you they're pregnant when they book for the appointments, but if you're not properly prepared to service that pregnant clientele, then you might miss out on an appointment and the employer might not be very satisfied when they hear that their pregnant client was not provided their appointment. So having that prenatal cushion uh, there um, is really important. If you're not prenatal trained, you, you might want to tell uh, the corporate employer that um, you're able to work on all healthy individuals uh, except for pregnant women because you do not have the equipment necessary to work on pregnant women or the training or, or what have you. So massage cream or gel, again, I, I massage through the clothes and straight on skin and on scalp. Um, when I'm providing my corporate on-site events. If I'm going to do hand massage, it will be at least a 15 minute appointment. I don't do hand massage with 10 minute appointments and I try not to schedule five minute appointments. You need a good 60 to 90 seconds to sanitize the chair, let the client get up, leave, um, and and I mean, 10 minute appointments, now they're only getting like eight and a half minutes of massage. Um, I'm gonna focus that time on the back. Only when they have 15 minute appointments or longer will I do hand massage. Again, a massage cream or gel for that. But I try and make sure I have unscented options because if you're at work, you might not wanna go back to your work desk smelling of lavender. Some people will haze you and so forth. <laughs> Um, for being a slacker at work going for massage, which is completely unnecessary. I pulled this up prior to recording this video. There are several studies out there that show that massage therapy in the workplace actually increases uh, employee productivity and accuracy and so forth. There's this wonderful study in Denmark about foot reflexology being offered in a corporate environment and how uh, it really improves employee employee productivity um, once they offered that service. In this little extract here of feasibility and effective chair massage offered to nurses at work, um, they showed that massages for nurse for nurses during work hours, reduce stress-related symptoms. Well, what's one of the number one problems, especially in a hospital environment, it's medical errors. And how do medical errors happen? When you're overworked and stressed, right? So if you can relieve stress in, in, the, in an office and in a corporate environment, you might have a better work product for it. It might be cost savings to actually have chair massage there. Here's another article that I just uh, found this morning, and this was the concept of chair massage 
for prevention of musculoskeletal pain and overload. Think about all those Amazon workers during COVID and how much overtime they're putting in and, and the employment shortages. So people are probably working longer hours and so forth. In this right here, they said that they had um, uh, nice improvements of reducing pain, specifically like in the upper trapezius. And this is a wonderful study for uh, showing an employer, yeah, will actually make your uh, employees feel better. <laughs> and, and this isn't just from past experience. This has been studied and published in science on pubmed.gov. Okay, so when you're at your uh, employment uh, um, corporate event, uh, one of the things that's critical to bring is sanitary aids. You must sanitize the chair in between clients. If you don't properly sanitize your chair in between clients, then it, it, to me it's almost malpractice. No, it is malpractice. I mean, you just cannot allow one person to be exposed to the last person's bacteria and so forth because you don't have sanitary aids there. It's your job to sanitize your chair in between clients. I always bring business cards because remember, this isn't just earning income. It's it's a huge visibility opportunity to provide corporate chair events. So, and I usually give like three business cards to a client so that they have a card and they can give cards to their coworkers, friends, family, what have you. Again, anytime that you've worked on someone, they should get some business cards to kind of continue that ripple effect of, hey, I'm here, I provide this service, and I'd love your business. Now, I always had music, candles, and mints in our on-site bag, and we had on-site bags at our establishment that were pre-packed and ready to go out the door, because sometimes these would be booked a month in advance. Sometimes these would be booked like, hey, can you come to the office today? We have to work overtime. People are pushing till midnight. We want to get chair massage in here to kind of give people breaks. Um, so music, um, it's up to you how you provide it. Of course, relaxation music's great. I don't play heavy metal. <laughs> Even if a client requests it, no, this is break time. Uh, candles, it, you might want to check with the employer first if it's okay to burn a candle. You might even want unscented options or minimal scent. Um, it's up to you. Some people have aversions to scents and even allergies. So be careful about using something that would eliminate client service if somebody's allergic to what you have in your room. And I always thought mints was a nice thing to give with the business cards. Of course, I usually had those individually wrapped wintergreen um, they were like lifesavers, but they were white and chalky. And, you know, usually when I handed a mint and a couple of business cards at the end of the service, some people might not want the business cards, but if the mint came with it, they always took it. <laughs> so um, that was kind of a technique I used uh, for my uh, corporate on-site, uh, expanding my visibility with the distribution of business cards is having mints with them too. And people like that little bit of refreshing service. If you can get um, next to the water cooler or if they have bottled water, Water in the office or what have you encourage of course the client to drink water that's going to help uh, with their overall health and that's basically what I have for our corporate chair massage um, some tips to selling some tips to of course you know the more service you do uh, the more exposure you might have and of course this is a reputational business get your on-site services online on your website so that people doing keyword searches in your area can hopefully find your website and book the service put as much detail as you can on the website about your on chair on site chair services. Uh, maybe it's a two hour minimum, your travel radius, uh, what's provided. You can do six appointments per hour, four appointments per hour, how many hours per day you can see. If you have multiple people that can be there. We we worked at South Shore Hospital. They have 10,000 employees there and we did a 24 hour rotation where we had uh, three shifts, eight hour shifts. Uh, the um, we had a 15 minute break for the therapist uh, after their first two hours, a one hour uh, meal break, and then another 15 minute break um, towards the uh, last four hours of their uh, shift. And we worked three uh, eight hour shifts. And we were able to see, you know, I, I think it was a couple thousand, over a thousand um, uh, uh, 
uh, hospital staff, I believe we were trying to do like 10 minute appointments. And during the day we were extremely booked. The overnight shift, uh, we actually had empty appointment slots, but we were able to work on the participants, like the ICU is still running uh, pretty full capacity, right? So um, those people who were able to come down, they received longer. A chair massage and it was nice that we had um, this was all on our website we already had visibility from news exposure of our services uh, I believe back in the 90s I, I charged maybe around ten thousand dollars for that event for a 24-hour event um, it can be great lucrative income to provide chair massage we we had I think during the day shift, there was at least uh, 50 therapists there. Not only did I use my own staff, but I called up all the other massage therapists and um, I asked them to come and we had a flat rate of what we paid the therapist. Um, and we just said that anybody who's working this event, you need to promote um, our business. You can't promote your own practice if we're paying you to provide chair massage as our establishment. And that's how we ran the event. So um, if you want more training, please come see us at CE Institute. It's ceinstitute.com. The CE stands for Continuing Education. We do provide certificates with our paid training and CE hours with certain eligible uh, courses. And until we see you in another class, we hope you enjoyed and be safe.